Good morning. This is Pastor Brian. Today we read the final chapter of Job 42. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey through the book of Job. I know it wasn't always easy, but I hope that you found wisdom, insight, knowledge, uh, understanding of of God and the world through this wisdom literature. So today, the final chapter, as we've been reading a chapter a day, Job chapter 42. Job answered the Lord, I know you can do anything. No plan of yours can be opposed successfully. You said, Who is this darkening counsel without knowledge? I have indeed spoken about things I didn't understand, wonders beyond my comprehension. You said, listen and I will speak. I will question you and you will inform me. My ears had heard about you, but now my eyes have seen you. Therefore I relent and find comfort on dust and ashes. After the Lord had spoken these words to Job, he said to Eliphaz from Teman, I'm angry at you and your two friends because you haven't spoken about me correctly, as did my servant Job. Now, take seven bulls and seven rams, go to my servant Job, and prepare an entirely burned offering for yourselves. Job, my servant, will pray for you. And I will act favorably by not making fools of you because you didn't speak correctly, as did my servant Job. Eliphaz from Teman, Bildad from Shua, and Zophor from Naamah did what the Lord told them. And the Lord acted favorably toward Job. Then the Lord changed Job's fortune when he prayed for his friends. And the Lord doubled all Job's earlier possessions. All his brothers and sisters and acquaintances came to him and ate food with him in his house. They comforted and consoled him concerning all the disaster the Lord had brought on him. And each one gave him a katesh and a gold ring. The Lord blessed Job's latter days more than his former ones. He had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 female donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters. He named one Jemima, a second Keziah, and the third Karen Hapuk. No women in all the land were as beautiful as Job's daughters, and their father gave an inheritance to them along with their brothers. After this, Job lived a hundred and forty years and saw four generations of his children. Then Job died, old and satisfied. Well, what a journey Job went through during this story, throughout this wisdom literature. So we see Job in the end relent to God and all that God had to teach Job. Never once, I think, ever really saying that Job was wrong in what he was doing. saying in his innocence per se, but more of challenging Job on the fact that Job felt that he understood exactly who God was and how God acted. And I think that was the point in which Job and God had a a uh, breaking of understanding of how God is and who God is in the world. Not that Job was ever guilty of what he, uh, of the things that he had never actually did, because it was that test between God and uh, the accuser, that Satan figure, uh, but more about recognizing 
God is God and that we have no way to compare or truly understand God's ways in this world. And so then we see uh, God actually rebuking Job's three friends, you know, Eliphaz and uh, Bildad and Zophar, because they were the ones that said that Job was wrong and that Job needed to repent and make sacrifices and atone for the sins that he did. So in that God, we see God does very verbally agree with Job and stand against uh, Job's friends. Job then gets all of his fortunes back, actually doubled, and then all of Job's extended family come to him. And uh, it says each one gave him a Katesh. And uh, I looked that up, and it seems that a Katesh uh, isn't very commonly discussed in the Bible, but when it is, it's usually talking about blessing. And so this, this little monetary gift is a form of recognizing blessing in Job's life. And then it's interesting also that uh, Job has seven sons and three daughters again. So the same amount as before. But the interesting part isn't so much that he, he basically got all of his children back in a sense. But the interesting part to me is that he has seven sons, none of their names are mentioned, but the three daughters all get names. And not only do they get names, but it says that Job gave them an inheritance along with all the seven brothers. So quite an interesting uh, change in what we typically know of as the way of inheritance for a family member. Uh, so very interesting. Uh, perhaps that can be read into uh, the abundance of blessings that Job received from God, that Job felt that equal blessings should be passed on to all of his family members. I'm not sure. What do you think about that? And uh, Job gets to live a, another 140 years after however old he was when this event took place. So that is the story of Job. Job dies old and satisfied, uh, basically saying that he lived out his entire life without any more of these kinds of complications, this, this uh, crazy situation that he found himself in. So what do you think about the book of Job as a whole? What do you think about this specific chapter of, of God and Job kind of ending up on the same side? Everyone kind of, obviously Job's friends had to repent, but everyone coming into uh, this more, uh, uh, not more, but a greater understanding of God, a greater understanding of one another, an understanding of how maybe suffering works in the world and how uh, how different God is from us and how we can't necessarily put God in the box that maybe we sometimes want to put God in. Uh, so what do you think about all of that? What do you what are your own thoughts about the book of Job? I know it's been a difficult book for uh, some of you. So I hope this this final chapter in this epilogue uh, helped you greatly. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Uh, thank you for sticking through each day with me. I hope you're well. Take care of yourselves and God bless you all.